Okay, Victor Momo from Excel Moments with a continuation of the solution series to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. If you are not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, advice, you know, you do. So you can boost your Excel formula game. This is Excel challenge 172. So what do we have here? We have a list of, you know, American first ladies, which I guess you may have seen in some other examples. And now you want to check, find the missing English alphabet from this column. So meaning that you have a couple of names here, about 47 of them, you know, and you want to check which alphabets do not appear. So from A to Z, which of them would you not see in this list? That's the question. I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, because I see the answers here in lowercase, then I may be using, you know, an expression that returns a lowercase for me. Okay, so the first thing is I will want to get a list A to Z in lowercase. I know that I can use the char function if i do char of 97 you know that gives me a so if i just take a sequence of 26 numbers from 97 i should have what i want so basically i can start off by using char and i can say sequence there are 26 of them because i know it's a to z and i'm going to start at 97 so it's going to go from 97 to 1 to 2 and then it gives you all the characters okay so and that's your a to z Okay, good. So basically, once you have this, what we are now going to do is we are going to search for each of them within all these names, right? Because you are using a search, it's not going to be case sensitive. So whether I find it as lowercase a or uppercase a, you know, that's not a problem. The only reason I use the lowercase is so that when I do my filter again to get, you know, the return values, I'm returning the lowercase. That's the only thing. So it doesn't really matter how you approach it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for all these within those names. But instead of searching, you know, row by row, what I can do is I can concatenate all this into one and do a search against that. But first, maybe I'll just define this as a variable. So let me make this a variable. Maybe I make this a variable A, right? So what I'm trying to do in this case is I'm trying to search for A, where A is all the alphabets A to Z, in the concatenated version of this. So meaning that concatenate all the names. Let's do control backspace, we're back. Okay, so basically, let's see what this returns. So now you can see that from that long string, it's now telling you, okay, A is found in, you know, position one, B is found in position two. And that makes sense because it starts off with Abigail, so A, B, right? And then you see some that have the hash value, okay? So the ones that have the hash value were not found. And those are the three suspects, I would say. So basically, if you can find a way to then filter, you know, by just those ones that have the hash value, then you'll be fine. So I can, you know, maybe put an is error around the search so that I can, you know, have like maybe a true or a false. Okay, so you can see that I have false. So everywhere where I have true, those are the guys I'm interested in. So if I feed this into a filter function, for example, that's a filter where you're filtering all the alphabets A to Z and you're filtering based on this true or false. The ones that are true, obviously, are the ones that don't show up. And you have what you want. So over the if error here, yeah, this whole is error thing will be my include criteria. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter. And what am I filtering? I'm filtering the array A to Z, which I have defined as what? A, right? Small letter A. Okay. So A, I'm filtering A where I have, you know, true or falses here. The ones that are true didn't show up. The falses are the ones that show up somewhere. So basically, that's that. I think I can close with one more bracket and we should be Okay, so, and I have, you know, Q, X, and Z. And that's, you know, probably, well, I mean, well, maybe a logical way to solve it. Okay, so you can also solve it maybe using like a count if. And I've used this construct in, I think, a similar problem to this. Well, I don't know if I'm going to share that video first or this one, but you would get to see both of them eventually. Okay, so let me pick out this expression again. Because I still am gonna use it, this whole thing here. All right, so that's gonna be useful here. So I put that. So basically, if I return A here, you know, that gives me, you know, my A to Z. Okay, so what I can now do is I can now do, you know, a count if, more or less like say, count if in this entire, you know, range how many times you have, you know, these alphabets occurring anywhere in there, okay? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do here, I'm going to do a count if, okay? So for the count if, then I select my range, right? 
and then i'm trying to check you know if it contains a to z so basically i'm going to do like you know a wildcard because that alphabet could be somewhere within the string so i concatenate an asterisk with the alphabet the alphabet is going to be represented by a here of course and then by another asterisk so meaning you are just trying to check all of them and get a total count of you know how many times each of those alphabets you know appear basically so let's close the count if let's close this and see okay so this is telling you that a appears 38 times b appears 10 times and so on so you should see some of them that appear zero so the zeros are the ones you know you're interested in okay so basically anyone that gives you a zero you know did not show up at any point so you can use the same filter concept here now so we are going to filter your a which is your a b c to z okay and you're filtering where your count if right so that's here where your count if gives you zero so anywhere your count if gives you zero those are alphabets that didn't show up so we close the filter and we close the lens okay and we have basically the same thing so you know you could approach it in definitely in more than one way but fundamentally the same idea using the filter function you know over the list of alphabets okay and then deciding with whichever technique you want which of them appear which of them don't appear you do a search if it finds it it would return the position in which it's found if not it returns an error then you can take advantage of its error you know to find that out sometimes depending on the situation its number whatever the other way is also doing a count if and saying okay if you do a count of how many times that alphabet appears at zero it means it doesn't appear all the ones that appear more than zero obviously did appear and then you can filter based on that so those are like the two concepts that we applied i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please hit the like button you can also subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out